In today's video, we're gonna go over how you can make an extra $2,500 per week day trading using these exact steps. So we're gonna break this down into three different parts and I'm gonna focus on each part because they are very important if you have any type of target in mind, right? So the first thing is to set a goal before you can ever write a to-do list to achieve those goals, right? So it's the bigger goal first and then you break it down into little micro goals in order to get you there. Speaking of breaking it down, so let's say that your goal is $2,500 per week, which actually equals 10 K a month. So about six figures a year that is very doable, but there's going to be some things that we need to consider. Like first, how many trades per week are you taking on average? So for example, myself, I usually do not trade more than three times per day. If I do, I consider that over trading just for my trading style. Some people take five to 10 trades. Some people can only squeeze in one because they might work a full-time job and are really struggling to get on the screens. So instead of a daily profit goal, which I feel like just hurts your trading psychology in the long run, I like to break it down by week and then divide that by how many trades you take on average. So if I take about three trades per day and that's five trading days, that means I am trading about 15 trades per week again on average. So $2,500 divided by 15 equals a little under $167 per trade. So what I do with this number, and I need you to come up with your own number based off of your goal. So for example, if you are somebody who is looking to make $2,500 per week, but you're only taking on average one trade per day, that means you need to divide that number by five and your trades need to be looking at a larger point of view because you're looking to make more per trade. Now, the reason I like for you guys to have this number in mind is because obviously the goal is to get your R multiple well over that. Meaning if you are looking to make $300, you're only risking hundred or under, or if you're looking to make $500, maybe you're only risking 150 or under. So your R multiple in trading is extremely important. That is your risk versus reward. Especially if you're only taking one trade a day, you're going to need to be very picky, which we will get into in just a minute. Going back to the calculator here, using my example. So let's say that I need to average 167 per 15 trades. Now that is an average, meaning I'm going to make more on some and lose more on other trades. The goal is obviously to keep your losers very small and your winners big. So over time, example, over a five day trading period, you come out on top when it comes to your $2,500 target. Now that's where I oftentimes see traders go wrong with the daily profit target is they're so hyper-focused on reaching that daily goal that oftentimes they are taking trades that are subpar that they really shouldn't just because they want to hit that goal. You're too fixated on profit and loss and you're not fixated on your strategy. So just for example, let's say that I made three times that if I get a $500 trade, I am well ahead for that day. As long as I can keep my losers underneath that like 160, 150 mark because three times 167 equals over $500. So if I'm looking to make three times what I need to be successful that week and then only risk that amount, then that's gonna get me ahead on that one to three ratio. So that's just a little trick that I like to use is the goal here, break down how many trades you're taking per week so you can be realistic to hit your weekly profit target. And I will show you an example on what I took today with gold and oil. So I had a winner on gold and then a loser on oil, but as long as they balance out properly, my research reward is on point. The losers don't matter. They are part of your strategy. And so they shouldn't affect you because you know they are going to happen. The goal is when they do happen, you keep them very small and you move on. So the next part we're going to dive into is the charts and we're going to look at what an A plus setup might look like. Now this is based off of my strategy and this has to be something that you need to already be prepared and understand based off of your strategy. What does an A plus, you know, B minus, C minus trade look like for you? And then you need to adjust your expectations accordingly. If you are taking a C minus trade, you shouldn't be going super heavy and you shouldn't have very high expectations for that trade versus an A plus setup is what you put more of your focus on because all of your criteria is being met. So based off my strategy, this is what that could look like. Okay, so pulling up Discord here, you can see I started posting charts at around 7.50 a.m. I typically like to trade futures in the pre-market session, and so I'm usually doing some charting around 7.45 and then looking to start taking trades at around 8 a.m. Eastern. This should also be part of your trading plan, asking yourself what times of day am I best to trade based off of my schedule or maybe what things I trade. So if you trade options, you can't trade in pre-market. If you trade stocks or futures, you can. 
Stocks aren't as liquid or volatile as futures, so you might not get a trade every single day unless there's news, earnings, or volatility for some reason. But for me, futures are consistently volatile every single morning, so I am a-okay with having my trading session start at around 8 a.m. Eastern up into market open. And then I'll take a break and usually come back for my lunch reversals, which is one of my favorite trading strategies, especially if you are trading later in the day. But for this example, let's just go over the gold trade from this morning. So my larger point of view here, which was this chart, I was looking for this trend line to hold. I was looking for micro range, which is just a FIB strategy based off of my trading strategy. And that was giving me a key level of 2046.10 combined with 2048.30. If we held, I was looking for longs up into 2062. Now, this is gonna be really key and important because I wanna show you, I only caught a very, very tiny piece of what ended up happening. So if we zoom in, 8 a.m. Eastern was right in here. And then we ended up moving all the way up very close to my 2062 target up into 945. So I only took a small piece of this move and I'm completely okay with that. Yes, I missed out on a larger trade, but I hit my target and I was completely satisfied with the amount of time I spent versus the profits I received. So that's another thing is a lot of times when people have these weekly goals, maybe you start to hit you know, a really nice trade and you're up green on the day, but you're never satisfied because again, you're too focused on a daily profit goal and not a weekly profit goal. So maybe you are at, I've seen this happen a ton. I used to do it a ton too. So let's say that you're back hyper-focused on 500 per day. And then you take this trade in the morning, you're at like 4.30 and you got a little bit of ADHD like I do and you're like, that number is gonna bother me. I have to break 500. So you start to break your rules. For me, breaking rules would mean trading into market open. And if I did that, I might have gotten stopped out on this dip and then given back profits that I had made earlier that morning because again, I was taking a trade based off of my P&L and my daily profit goal and not the bigger picture. Okay, so back to this trade. Remember what I was looking for was again 204830 to hold. And then we had a channel forming here. So it wasn't a very pretty one, but it was there. So if you take this dotted trend line and you connect all of these points right here as best as possible, I like to have as many touching as possible. So this one's kind of missing, but we did have a touch point here and here. And we came back up and we were testing again, finally broke, back tested through. This is what I was referring to. That was a very easy way to get faked out right into market open, which creates the most volatility in fake outs, which is typically why I avoid trading it. And I highly recommend if you're new, you avoid market open. But my little trade was right here before market open. So we're going to have to zoom in to assess that. And I'm gonna show you how much I made, and I'm gonna also show you guys a cool calculator so you can go in and kind of figure out for yourself, okay, if I had this many contracts and the move made you know, this amount of move, what was I risking? What would I have made? And that's a really good way for you to go back and see, are you actually taking trades that are gonna get you that risk versus reward that will overall get you to your $2,500 a week goal? because oftentimes traders are not doing that. They're just jumping in and out of trades and they're doing it very randomly and sporadically, which overall will just take too many paper cuts and leave you pretty negative, especially if you're considering commissions. All right, so we're gonna go back to Discord because I posted an updated chart. I typically don't execute my trades on the larger time frame. I zoom in for that. And so here's a five minute chart showing you what I was looking to happen. I love doing my little drawings. These are how I do my quote unquote trade alerts in Discord is I am drawing what I'm looking for. And then obviously all of the education inside of Discord will give you my step-by-step -step process on what I look for to enter and exit trades. So. 204830 was very important to me. I was looking for a bounce up to that trend line channel that was forming, which is right near 2050. So then let's go back and see what happened. Right in here is where I started to take this trade. We're gonna zoom in further because we only need to focus on what I took off of this small move to make what I did. And reminder, we are also gonna go over a loser that I had, which was on oil. And so you have to balance those two out. So right here is where I started to look for an entry because we were coming in at 8 a.m. volume. We saw a slight push down here and then we broke trend to the upside. If I can draw this little trend line here, we broke trend to the upside, which is the move that I ended up taking. I actually sold too soon, 
which is okay because I was just looking for this little scalp and the amount of time I spent in this trade was very, very little. So based off of what I made, I was happy. Risk versus reward was insanely good too. I was very happy with that. So risk level, and I can actually pull up, this is what I posted in the group after the trade was done, just so they know my risk, my entry, and my exit. So risk level was in pink, entry was the green arrow, and then the exit was the red arrow. So again, you can see very, very tight risk level here, which is what I am looking for, is I want a good risk versus reward. So that was right here. Once again, I had my risk underneath this candle entry, and then I exited once we started to hit this top trend line here, which you can see we eventually broke to the upside. We started to experience some chop, but we did move higher. That's completely fine. Again, my target was top trend line. As soon as I saw this candle, I was moving my stop up with my play. So I went ahead and exited that trade to lock in profits. So that trade was literally starting at around 815 and it was over before 825 or right around 825. So that was a 10 minute scalp. I consider that a scalp. Day trade, I'd, I'd say it's a little bit longer, like over 30 minutes or something, but people have different definitions. So in 10 minutes, I was able to make a good chunk of money. So let's go use that calculator I was gonna link down below for you guys. So you can play around just in case you're not familiar with how futures move or work, and you can see kind of profit versus loss on a play like this. And again, this was a very tiny move. I actually missed my best entry because I wasn't up early enough. My goal is to get there by 7 a.m., but some mornings it doesn't happen. You can see 7.35, we actually touched that bottom channel and got close to my 2046.10 level. If I would've gotten that in, Entry, that would have been double profits and even better, but that's okay. There's always a way to enter a trade. Even if you feel like you're a little late, you just have to be patient and wait for it to form that higher support level, which we did right here. And that was where I entered. Okay, so this is a fun little features calculator. And if you go to select, remember I was trading gold. So we're gonna type in GC here and we are going to click the gold one top. There are micro versions of all futures, meaning if this move was too much for you or maybe the numbers are too much for you, I highly recommend, even if you're brand new to futures trading, especially if you're brand new, to start with micros because those are gonna be a smaller fraction of what a normal contract would be. It means smaller profit, smaller losses, but it's good if you're just trying to get your feet wet. So I'm gonna click on gold here. And then what I'm gonna do is do my entry price. Remember we're long. So my entry price, let's go back just to double check this chart. I was entering right around here. So let's say 2048.50 was the entry, 2048.50. And again, this is a great way for you to just go back and make sure that you are getting a proper R multiple. Okay, so entry price is 2048.50. I remember my take profit. I just wanna be exact here, but I'm pretty positive I remember what it was. Yeah, it was 2050.50. I remember I had my fives, so. There we go. Okay, 2050 50 was my take profit. Now stop loss, if you remember, I had it um, pretty dang close. So that was gonna be right underneath this candle, right near 2048. And so you need to make sure you're inputting all of this information. And this is also healthy practice to make sure you are considering all of these things before you enter a trade. What's your entry price? What is your take profit? What is your stop loss? And if you're not considering all of those things, you're most likely not following any type of trading plan. You're never consistently going to get to a weekly profit goal if you are not following a trading plan. So I highly recommend that you start making yourself do this if that's what you are looking to achieve. So number of contracts, I'm just gonna start with one and then we'll work our way up from there. So if you hit calculate, it'll bring you down here and say that risk versus reward was a one to four, which I told you is fantastic guys. This is a really nice trade. And so I was risking 50 to make 200, right? So I had more than one contract, and so you can play around with it and say, okay, if I had three contracts, what is my risk and what is my reward? And so 150 is your risk, 600 is your reward. And I'm also using a trade copier, which you guys will be able to see um, in just a minute. So technically I'm making that per 10 accounts. So just keep that in mind, but I never like to put that statistic on a YouTube video because I think that's very unrealistic. If you decide to do futures, which I have an entire free futures training workshop, which I will link down below, I just created for this year. It includes information on prop firms, trade copiers, my favorite futures broker, all of that. But if you're just starting out, it's highly unlikely that you're gonna trade multiple accounts. That's something that's way more advanced. So. 
Um, number of contracts for here, you can see you are risking 200 to make 800. Number of contracts being increased, that comes with experience, that comes with confidence in your ability to follow a trading plan. And again, you just need to make sure risk versus reward is practiced every single day, especially if you've got that weekly profit goal that you want to hit. You're not going to be able to do that unless you are actually taking into factor your R multiple and your trading plan. So you guys have an idea of what you could have made on futures market and gold. And a lot of times I'll get people asking me, well, how much capital does that cost to put in? If you go the prop firm route, you can get a 50K prop firm, typically with a coupon for like 40 or $50. So there are very low entry level prices to be able to trade futures like this. Or if you do um, a self-funded account, there are very futures friendly brokers out there, which I mentioned in the futures trader workshop, where you can start with like 500 to a thousand dollar account. So there are very, very reasonable entry points when it comes to smaller accounts. I also just did an entire YouTube video on fastest way to grow a small account in 2024, which shocker, I'm going to mention futures, but you can watch that after this if you want. However, to save you a little time, it's going to point you guys to the futures workshop. So, all right, let's move on here and let's go look at the loser that I took. Before we go into my loser, I do need to point out something. We have been on this oil trade all week. So you can see from this chart right here, this was near the 72 level where we were looking to take longs on oil. So this has been a very lucrative long play. You can see yesterday I also posted this. So we were looking for higher support over 72.22 to make our way over into that 74.50 mark. So again, the CL long trade has been playing out very well. But this morning I was looking to take a scalp long. So just a very quick trade off the thesis that I thought we were going to hit 74.50. But there was a few problems and why it wasn't too likely to happen. We were also getting very risky the closer we got to this supply zone. Not to mention again, my micro range FIB strategy was showing me that there's some resistance near 7420. What did we do on this candle? We rejected it very, very nicely, but I still took a small loser and I want to show you guys what I did and what it looks like. Okay. And I want to scroll back to 8 a.m. this morning. So 8 a.m. I was looking for a trend break over 7390. Again, this wasn't a really A plus setup. The GC trade had me green, so I was willing to gamble a little bit with this play. And keep in mind, losers, again, are part of your strategy. So you have to factor these in and you have to be prepared for them. If you just act like you're never going to lose, then you're definitely not going to hit any type of weekly targets because you're going to have one day where you blow them all because you weren't prepared mentally to start losing in a trade. Okay, so 8 a.m. this morning is where we need to go and look. You can see 8 a.m. was right in here. So that doji candle was getting me intrigued and I was looking to take it long. I entered long right in here. We spiked up, we back tested, we tried again and we failed. So entry like right in here near 7390. And then I had a 7385 stop loss because I moved it up off of this candle and I entered one more contract. So two contracts and then I ended up taking a loss right here, like right under 7385. So very, very small loss. Again, that's what you want. You want to keep your losers when they're not working very small. Go back to the calculator, type in oil. I was not trading micros. I was just trading the regular one here. And then we're going to go back and enter in this information. So I had a, so entry price was 7388. Take profit that I had was looking for 7450. Um, so we're going to go ahead and enter take profit at 7450 and then stop loss. Remember I had that very, very close. So I believe it was like a few ticks under. So let's just do 7383. I believe I got stopped out at around 7384, but again, I'm giving myself a little bit of room for error. Calculate, um, oh, not four contracts to calculate. And I was risking a hundred dollars to make 1240. So the fact that I took that small loss does not matter whatsoever because I had a great <laughs> risk versus reward. I knew that trade was not an A plus trade and it was kind of a gamble just because we had oil inventories today and we had some other things working against us. But still, I had the right mindset and so a loss is a loss. As long as you followed your trading plan, you had a good vers risk versus reward, it's part of it. It's part of the game. So overall, ended up netting, I think after commissions, like. 550 that day or something around that. I'll put it on the screens again for you guys to see per account. So per 10 accounts with a trade copier is what I ended up netting for this morning's session. So not bad at all. But that is a wrap for today's video. The goal of this video was to get you guys to think 
beyond a number target. So yes, you might want to make $2,500 per week, and that is a great goal, but what account size are you working with? What trade instrument are you trading? So if you're not trading something that has leverage and you're just trading with a thousand dollar account on something just like a regular stock, or you know maybe you're doing options, either one, you just have to make sure that your target makes sense. Because if you're setting yourself up for failure, it's just gonna hurt your ego in the long run. You're like, why can't I achieve this goal? Maybe your goal's out of reach based off of how many days you can trade and you need to adjust it. Maybe you don't have the proper account size, which is why I like prop firms, because you can get someone else to fund your account. Um, but take all these things into factor when you are looking to make an extra 2,500 or maybe an extra 500 per week. Maybe you're just looking to go green, you know, and not lose money. Make sure you're following your trading strategy. Make sure your R multiples on point. Are you risking too much for that trade? Are you taking random trades, just being impulsive? There are so many things you need to be asking yourself in order to make an extra 2,500 per week. And that is all for me today. As I mentioned, I have that free futures workshop for you guys that is linked down below. And I also have a really cool quiz for traders. So it'll let you know your best trading strategy based off of your personality type and habits and your daily lifestyle. So make sure to go check those things out. And if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. With that being said, I will see you guys next time.